YouTube friends. Welcome back to Flying with Brian. It's May here in northwest Mississippi and it's already getting hot and humid out in the hangar. Uh, today we're going to update you on the progress on the tailor craft. Uh, I've got the fabric on the aileron, on the right aileron, and we're about to start rib stitching, so uh, stay tuned. When we left off with episode one, I had just started putting the fabric on this right aileron. Uh, I believe we had uh, covered the top, but we had not uh, finished covering the bottom. As you can see now, it's, uh, it's fully covered and it's been shrunk. Uh, the process for putting this fabric on is basically you glue it around the perimeter of the structure and then you shrink it down at three different temperatures with an iron. Uh, the first one's at 250, the second one at 300, and then the last one between 350 and 375, and that makes it nice and tight. Um, so once we've done that, we're gonna do a process called rib stitching. And, and uh, let me give you a little, bit, a little bit more information about what rib stitching is. An aircraft wing basically has two main structural parts, the spars and the ribs. The spars are basically the backbone of the, of the wing. Uh, in this aircraft, you can see they're wooden. Uh, there's a front main spar and then a rear spar. And then uh, attached to the spars, we have ribs. And ribs give the wing its shape. They give the airfoil its shape. And that determines a lot about the way the aircraft flies. And once we have uh, the spars and the ribs all um, connected together and the wing structurally built, then we, we put something over, over that surface. Uh, more modern type aircraft are going to have an aluminum skin that will be riveted to those ribs. Uh, but the older and even some of the uh, newer aircraft that are, that are more bush plane style still use a fabric instead of aluminum over these uh, ribs. As the wing makes lift in flight, we get low pressure on the top surface. And that low pressure wants to pull the fabric up and away from the wing structure. And obviously that's bad. Um, changes the airfoil shape, changes the wing's flying characteristics. It could even uh, end up in the fabric coming apart, coming off the wing, and then uh, you'd be done flying for the day, obviously. Uh, but the way we keep that fabric attached to the wings, uh, there's two or three different ways. Uh, the, the tried and true uh, old method is to use stitching. Uh, some aircraft will use screws, some aircraft use rivets. This tailor craft um, uses a, a, a wire, uh, a, a wire clip, and that clip goes along each rib and clips into those holes. And that keeps the fabric attached to the top and bottom structure of the wing in flight. Uh, so it keeps a consistent shape and flies consistently. The ailerons and the tail surfaces, however, don't have that clip system. So I'm gonna have to go in and I'm gonna tie knots around each of these ribs where you see those pencil lines. You can see I've laid out uh, my hole pattern along the top and the bottom uh, and the spacing. I've used a long straight edge and, and marked all that so it's uh, not haphazard but nice and, nice and organized and neat and just shows good workmanship. Uh, you can see I've even pre-punched uh, the holes for the needle to go through. I'm about to start tying some of these knots. I'll show you some of the equipment here. This is the needle. And uh, we use this rib lacing cord. It's, uh, it's, it's flat cord and it's impregnated with wax, which it uh, helps it from chafing and helps it slide through the holes and everything together. And uh, I'm gonna give it a whirl. I'll list some, uh, some, some links down in the notes below about uh, the actual knot tying. Um, I don't really have the equipment here to, today to set up to do a really uh, intricate video about knot tying and I, I got to practice a little bit myself but I'll put some I put a couple links in the notes below and uh, we get started and then I'll update you here in a little, in a little bit all right we're down to the last rib here uh, show you the process this first knot is called the starter knot So I'm going to find a hole here on the back side. Come back around this rib, find a hole on the top side. Now I'm 
basically going to tie a square knot. And I'm going to tighten it down, pull it over to this left side. Now I'm going to tie another half inch on each side of that to lock it in position. back over to the right side now trim it down to three quarters an inch or so tie another half hitch on the opposite side And lock it down. And now I need to poke this whole knot and the remnants there down through the whole original hole to hide it out of the way. This can be a little bit stubborn sometimes. Now, go to the next holes. So we'll take our curved needle, start here, come up along the rib on the same side, come out of this hole. There we go. Now we're going to go down. Come back up. And leave a little loop here. Should we see what you're doing in the back? All right, so the stick is on the back. We've got a loop on the top. So we'll twist that loop clockwise. Too, too short a cord to show you guys but come through towards me on the top half and then back out away from me on the bottom half snug that down pulling it to each side and then, uh, you heard it pop there as it goes down into this hole on the same side that we started with Shorter needle or more, more cord.
I didn't quite leave myself enough cord on this one. So it's making it a little more difficult to show you what I'm doing here. But I believe we can make it work. This is the half hitch on the last nut to lock it in place. Trim it a little bit. Stick the remnants down in the hole. And there we have it. Three knots with one continuous thread on it with the knots hidden on a nice flush surface. And the whole aileron is stitched up and ready for finishing tapes. And uh, hopefully we'll get some tapes going here later on this week and get videos of that coming. Until next time, we'll see you.